So let's take this right down. Welcome to Long Range Pursuit. We've got a pretty cool episode coming up. Uh, Justin Gibbons and his brother Colton and their father Tom take a trip to Alaska to hunt do-it-yourself caribou. Uh, it's special because they borrowed a Gunworks rifle and a camera and they got some pretty good shot opportunities, uh, a couple long shots and some really good shots. And they did a really excellent job of amateur videography so that we can bring it to you. Now, I'm really intrigued with this format we've introduced on Long Range Pursuit that allows our clients, our customers, you know, allows some outfitters to provide some footage of, of real guys using our products out in the field. And uh, we've seen some amazing results and we're going to bring you some more awesome Long Range Pursuit episodes this year. All right, September 13th, we just left Fairbanks. We're about to hit some of the worst road in the world, going about 500 miles in the middle of nowhere. There's no services, no fuel. You can see the leaves are already changing on the trees and dropping off and it's only the 13th of September, so fall is here for sure. I've heard there's uh, been some snow up there on the Hall Road, North Slope, Vatican Pass. It's going to be pretty nasty. I'm going to go give it a try. I think we're pumped. You pumped, Colton? I'm definitely pumped. up to Attigan Pass now. You can see we're out of the uh, deciduous trees. We're in nothing but conifers and high rolling tundra. Got some snow on the mountains up here, some termination dust as they call it. I'm pretty excited. It's still 60 degrees, blue skies. We've got real great weather right now. The big delta underneath us here in the river. But after we crest Attigan Pass, that's where all the cat and caribou are going to be on the other side there. caribou out here last night and we're going to try and make a play on them today. Here's the Alaska pipeline right behind us. It's pretty impressive but uh, we're going to try and kill them with a bow with Colton here first. Uh, if that doesn't work we're going to move to the muzzle loader with my dad and if that doesn't work then we're going to bust out the gun work special. He'll seven mag shoot one at a thousand yards so we have a lot of options today. A lot of caribou out here. There's probably five or six good bulls that we've been looking at. Um, we're gonna get out here on this ridge. They're all feeding right on top of this ridge out here and uh, see what we can do. We got five points locked in the waypoint finder on the GPS and we're ready to start hiking across the tundra. Oh, hey guys, all, all three. three are big. Yeah. There are three big ones right there. One of them is definitely a shooter. There's a couple other possibles. I'm thinking the G7 setup's what we're gonna be looking at. Alright, he's 7.30, to compensation, dial 710, 710. Alright, he's 
730. Ballistic compensation, dial 710, 710. Hold right on. Okay. Right behind the shoulder. Quick turn. Ready? Yep. Anytime. Yeah. Take him. Okay. Wait, stop walking. Nice! Colton, get out in front of the camera. Grab that gun. First, Alaskan Fair and Ground Caribou. Talk to us. What do you think of that Gunworks gun right there? Well, I gotta say, it drops them like a sack of potatoes. <laughs> 730 yards. Dial in and pull the trigger and you got a dead caribou on the ground. <laughs> First oh my God. caribou. Fair and Ground. Up here in the Arctic. How does that feel, Cole? Absolutely amazing. It's a great feeling. Up in some great terrain. Came up here just last night. Walked out here this morning. We had spotted some last night, like we said on some earlier video, and uh, saw them this morning. Walked out here, hiked our butts out here about five and a half miles just to drop this nice Alaskan caribou. Oh my gosh. Oh. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! <laughs> that thing is huge. I didn't know he was that big. Oh my god. Oh, that is oh something. Oh my god. Colton. Colton. Brother. My. Double shovels, he's huge. God. He's a monster. <laughs> what? What is this? What do you have to. What? <gasps> Spotted these pretty close up, or pretty far out here is. They ended up heading up onto this hill right over here and uh, we're starting to make a play on them. They ended up coming down into this flat ground over here and uh, Justin and I, we ran up here as fast as we could, trying to get a shot. We kept diving behind these little ridges out here. You can't really tell that it's ridgy, but there's dips and everything else throughout here. And uh, anyways, finally got a good opportunity on them. Went turn sideways, went turn sideways, and as soon as he did, had the range set up, dialed in the scope, let him have it. So, now I got a nice, beautiful Alaskan caribou. Got to come out here on the beautiful terrain out here and up past the Brooks Range. And just glad we can make this all happen. All right, today's Long Range University segment is a little non-standard. Usually we're so focused on the gear and the gadgets and the, the techniques to get set up and we're learning all about shooting long range and how to get it done. Today I want to step back just for a minute and, and take a break and think about firearm safety. Uh, it's, it's something that it's really easy to get casual about but it's so important to follow just a few simple rules. Number one, we need to always treat our firearms like it's loaded. What that means is we're going to control our muzzle. We're never going to point our firearm at anything that we wouldn't want to shoot. Uh, on number two, we need to uh, be aware of our target and what's beyond it. Uh, that could be a situation down in the timber. Uh, it could be up on a ridge line. We need to know what our target is and be able to identify it, and we need to know what's behind it. Whether you've got a silhouette situation uh, and, and that missed shot could go over the rim, there could be a ranch house, there could be a, a, a rancher or somebody's cows. Uh, we don't ever want to put a bullet out there where we don't know where it's going to end up. So be aware of your target. Number three, we've got uh, a mechanical device called a safety on our rifles. And it's, it, it's confusing to think that, that that makes this firearm inoperable. Um, a safety is a mechanical device. It's something that can fail. So don't rely on your safety. Use it. Uh, it, it could save the day, but don't rely on your safety. I, I carry my gun without chambering around. 
and I don't carry my gun around loaded on safety. Just treat it like it's something that could fail when you need it the most. Number four, firearm maintenance is very important. Um, be, be careful to maintain your firearm, keep it in proper maintenance. If you're in the field and you take a tumble, uh, check and make sure you don't have a bore obstruction. If, you, if your gun's been in the gun cabinet all year, don't take it out and shoot it. Run a patch down there, make sure spider webs haven't filled it plumb full of cobwebs. It's really important to have proper maintenance and proper bore condition to be safe. And finally, use eye protection and ear protection. It's vital to protect your ears. Uh, every time you shoot a gun without ear protection, it does damage. Uh, if you can in the field, uh, carry a set of plugs and stick them in there. For sure at the range where it's so easy to control, use ear protection and eye protection. Thanks for bearing with me on that. Make sure the next time you're at the range or out in the field that you consider the firearm safety topics we just covered and make sure that you take it serious and make sure that your practices and those of your, your, your children and your buddies also comply. It's all over the place. We're out here on the edge. First shot, 25 mile an hour wind. Tell you what, that's a tough shot. Hey, I'm Mike Davidson with Gunworks. Hey, it wasn't snowing this morning, but our UPS guy came in about lunchtime and he was just covered with snow. And we've been wanting to set up this shot scenario for a little while, just waiting for the right day. We've got a, a real snowy day and we just wanted to see, there's two things that we were looking at. Is the snow gonna change our bullet's point of impact? And two, will the rangefinder get us some ranges at, at these types of ranges in these types of conditions? So we've just got out here, we're, we're, uh, we're trying to set up quick, we're not really dressed for it, but I've got some targets out here at seven, eight hundred yards, some a little closer. I'm going to see what kind of ranges I can get with the rangefinder in this snow, and then we're going to sit down and, and make the shot and see if, if that uh, uh, precipitation, this snow, is going to change our bullet's point of impact. So let me see if I can get some ranges real quick. Now, I, I looked through my scope just a minute ago at, at this first bank of targets, and I could just barely make out the targets. Um, especially there at 700, I, I just can't hardly see them. I'm gonna, I'm gonna I can see them through the rangefinder. It's not gonna pick them up at 750. There's the range at 500. there's a range at 640. So we've got a real heavy snow going and I'm still picking up ranges at 500 and 600, just about 700 yards. The rangefinder has a couple modes that allow you to acquire ranges in tougher conditions just like this. Uh, we're gonna use the farthest mode in this snow and what that does is it ignores all this all this stuff that's happening up front with this snow uh, and, it, and it picks up the farthest target that the, that the beams uh, the impulses are hitting the beam. So I'm gonna just go ahead and shoot. We've got a target right out here at 640 yards. And it's giving me a range every time. My corrected range for this snow, it says down to uh, 655. So let's sit down and shoot it and see if it changes the point of impact. I'll tell you what, if we had our other if we had our other range finders out here, I guarantee we wouldn't be getting these types of ranges in, in this snowy of uh, conditions. Let's, let's take the shot. Let's try this one at 500 first. We'll move out to 640. Okay. Let's let's run one out here to 640 yards. Looks like looks like it didn't really mess with our point of impact there. We'll go out to the next one. Too much wind. Now that target at 640 yards, that's we're shooting at a little 10 by 12 inch piece of steel, so that's a kill zone on a mule deer, elk, antelope. Uh, pretty sweet. We can get those ranges in these type type of conditions. And it doesn't look like the snow is going to really affect us as far as in a hunting situation. Uh, just range it, dial it, and shoot it. It's that easy.
I'm Mike Davidson with Gunworks. That's a pretty tough shot this week. You get out there and do some practice too. The G7 rifle scope is built by Night Force Optics. Each scope must pass an extreme set of quality control tests, including the punishing side impact test. Absolutely zero point of impact shift is allowed. No other scope is built to withstand this level of testing. Every component is designed, manufactured, and assembled to a stringent set of specifications and tolerances. The critical components are those that affect the tracking and adjustment mechanism of the scope or hold the lens elements in place. Any shift or variation can cause a significant change in performance. With an optical system using a reticle for aiming, any displacement of any one of the many lens elements will distort the apparent position of the reticle. The amount of shift required to change your point of impact significantly is very slight. This piece of paper is only three thousandths of an inch in thickness, and when inserted in the test fixture, it displaces the reticle several minutes of angle. To prevent any of the lens elements from shifting due to side impact, recoil, or vibration, every lens is cemented into its respective lens cell using a proprietary military-spec bonding agent. After the epoxy is mixed and applied, the lens assemblies are cured in a laboratory oven. This secures the lenses in a semi-rigid, stress-free manner that eliminates any lens shift. The lens cells that contain the lens elements are also precisely machined to fit the scope body, further eliminating a common source of point of impact shift. The spring that maintains pressure on the erector tube is critical to holding your zero and making repeatable and precise adjustments. These springs start as raw material on coils and go through several operations to cut, bend, and punch the spring into proper form. After the pieces are formed, they will spend up to two weeks in the polishing tumbler to create a smooth surface that guarantees flawless operation. The material is pure titanium and will not fatigue with repeated use. After the spring passes quality inspection, it will give a lifetime of dependable service. The elevation adjustment threads require a perfect fit to minimize backlash and ensure accurate adjustments. Each adjustment stem is turned and then threaded using precise CNC equipment. The tolerances are extremely tight with over 100 threads per inch. The assemblies are hand fit and tested to meet minimum specifications for backlash, less than 1 30th the thickness of a human hair. When the components are assembled into the finished product, the attention to detail and quality allow these scopes to pass the toughest torture test in the industry and hold zero under the most punishing impacts and track precise adjustments perfectly. Two performance metrics vital to long-range hunters and shooters. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. Nice found it. It's found it hard. Oh, there's a good one right there. Give me a range. Three fifty. Got him? Yep. He's facing at us, right? Yep. You guys ready? You ready. Okay. You ready? Yep. That is how we do it. You got me in this, or what? <laughs> oh, what's that? He's shooting off of a caribou. Off the horn of the caribou. That's how it's done. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> how do you feel about this caribou? I'm very happy with him. He looks great. He had awesome tops. We were debating between the two. I had an opportunity to present itself where I was able to shoot off of the horn of my brother's caribou kill this caribou. Made it happen. I'm very happy with him. Here we are up here near Prudhoe Bay again on the Dalton Highway. Second time this year. Just can't get enough of it. This is my second big bull that I've killed this year. We were able to successfully uh, take three today with this G7 system. Uh, never have I used such a compatible system before. You, the scope, the gun, and the range finder. It's a one click. It's a one shot deal. You're able to successfully seal the deal in one shot. Hey, thanks for watching this episode. Uh, I, I'm really excited to be able to bring some real life 
uh, hunting and, and filming footage from guys that, that aren't professionals and, and put it in your lap and show you what guys that have a little determination can do. Uh, long range shooting is, is for everybody. It's a discipline that just requires a little practice and the right gear. Now the right gear doesn't necessarily mean the most expensive gear. We make complete shooting systems at Gunworks, but we also do some services. If you need your gun rebarreled, we can do that. Uh, if you'd like to start with a long range system that's based around your good shooting rifle, you can send it in to us and we'll mount and calibrate a scope. That's a good way to get started. You know, watch our videos, watch the training materials, come to one of our long range shooting courses. We want to make sure that you feel like you can be included in this long range sport and that you understand that it's very simple and very straightforward if you just put in a little time and a little effort. Another thing, make sure that you send in your tough shot uh, suggestions. You got some idea of a, of a crazy shot scenario or you were on a hunt and could have taken that monster buck if you would have been able to make this shot. Send it in, let's see if we can stump Mike. Uh, email it to toughshot at gunworks.com. Hunting apparel for long range pursuit provided by Sitka and Kinetrek Boots of Montana. License applications made through Cabela's Tags. Brought to you by Gunworks, G7 Optics, Night Force, Hornady, and Caldwell Shooting Supplies.